everybody, Kevwalski here, checking in with another one of our Hashtag Soon Files videos. Everything you never wanted to know about the Star Trek. Today we're going to be talking about Luna, a.k.a. the moon, a.k.a. nature's fleshlight. Did I say fleshlight? A.k.a. nature's flashlight, whatever. We're going to be talking about Luna in the context of Star Trek. And to begin, we're going to go all the way back into the far distant past of 1969, where American astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin became the first two humans to walk on the surface of the moon. But they were not the first people to walk on the moon. According to the TOS novel's prime directive and the TOS novel of the motion picture, an alien species and the Vulcans had already walked on the surface of the moon and observed people of Earth during that period of time. It's all speculation as to when that took place, but most likely a couple of hundred years prior to us actually achieving space travel. So after Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong's initial walk on the moon, there was an establishment of a base, a top secret base on the dark side of the moon. There was no public knowledge of this, and this was represented in the TOS comic Lost Apollo Part 2. At this secret base, a nuclear fission-based transport system was being tested out on an Apollo X that was actually launched from Luna itself, which is pretty cool. After the end of the eugenics wars, many of the offspring of Khan Noonien Singh's augmented followers secretly resettled onto Luna to escape persecution. They, they settled in uh, their own private space dome bubbles that nobody would go ahead and bother them, and they lived out the remainder of their very long and augmented lives there without causing too much of a ruckus. By 2155, Luna was the location of a great many mining facilities. It was also a primary nexus of the Terra Prime terrorist movement. You guys may remember that from the Enterprise show where they had Peter Wellingstar as John Frederick Baxton, uh, where they used that as a staging ground for their anti-alien and pro-xenophobia agenda during that time period. By the 23rd century, the capital of Luna was known as Luna City and served as the hub of communications between Earth and the rest of the Sol system. By 2373, Luna was inhabited by over 50 million people with such colonies as New Berlin, Tycho City, and Lake Armstrong found on its pressurized surface. Now keep that in mind because Luna was never terraformed completely. Rather, the Luna colonies were established underneath these giant pressurized domes that existed on the surface of the moon. Now, some inhabitants enjoyed leaving the dome settlements inside of EV suits and going around and exploring space much like Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin did, but the surface of the moon was never terraformed. Everybody that lived there lived underneath domed cities. As a major human settlement, Luna fell under the protection and jurisdiction of the Federation. In the late 24th century, most of the people that were born on the moon were known as lunar schooners or schooners or l lunar schooners lunar folks it may surprise some of you to know that luna itself was in fact a separate entity from earth and was a protectorate underneath the federation it was actually one of the original charter planets all the way up there with the andorians the vulcans and the tellarites most people lumped luna in with the soul system but Luna had its own functioning government at the time of the Federation Charter that when it first initially got signed, and it became a protectorate underneath the Federation. Now, of course, the predominantly, uh, you know, human populated settlement is, you know, synonymous with the solar system because of its proximity to Earth. But it's important to note that there is a political difference between those governing and controlling Luna and those governing and controlling the pro policies and, and situations going on on Earth. Along with the 50 million people that live on the moon, multiple cities and Mining facilities and shipyards had been established to help support the population there, including Armstrong City, Copernicus City, Luna City, New Berlin, New Chicago, Ocean View, Tycho City, uh, Faru Maru, all these different places. But it also included a couple little luxury spots where it, <laughs> most notably called Disney Moon, which is surprising that Disney as a corporation survived World War III. Or actually, rather, it's not surprising that Disney as a corporation survived World War III. It totally makes sense that they survived. But that is a place on the moon that you could go and visit. Anyways, that wraps up today's video. I hope you guys and gals learned something interesting and new about the moon slash lunar slash nature's flesh flashlight. Um, I thought it was kind of interesting. I didn't realize that there was so many different settlements on the moon and that there was actually a separate government a part of the moon that controlled it as opposed to just being a part of the Federation and a part of the solar system. I thought they were one and the same, but it turns out that they were actually rather different. So I hope that you guys found this video interesting. Tell me what you guys and gals think about Luna. Do you think it's a cool place? Do you think you'd like to go visit there? Is there something that you would like to see on Luna? 
I'm all so I'm all curious to hear what you guys and gals think about it. Please follow through a like and subscribe up on YouTube and follow me on Twitter at RealCatWalski and follow me on Facebook at Facebook.com at RealCatWalski and I will see you guys next time. Live long and prosper, my trekkies!